Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Church, we are so excited to have you with us, and we got a special service today. We are celebrating uh, the security cluster of this great nation of South Africa, and uh, we are so privileged to have our Deputy National Commissioner with us, General Vuma and her colleagues, General, so 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 awesome to have you here with us. And uh, she's going to be addressing us. And after this, I'm going to be uh, chatting and speaking a few words as far as our responsibility as a nation towards our government. You are really going to be blessed. But uh, we are so excited to have you with us. And uh, we really do appreciate you. Let me tell you, um, you know, we've been working very closely uh, uh, with the police, especially with the, the, the delivery of the food food, and you guys have looked after us, you guys have protected us, a phone call away, and you know what, we want to say we really love and appreciate you. South Africa is not, a diff is not an easy place to make sure that we're safe and secure, but um, we know that uh, you and the colleagues and uh, your people put your lives on the line every single day for us, and we want to say we really, really appreciate you, and good to have you with us here this, this morning. It's good to be here, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, senior Pastors, Bet and Shane Pristorius, all viewers and all people of South Africa, good afternoon. On behalf of the management of the South African Police Service and all our brave men and women in blue, it is a great honor to be in your presence today as we conduct this interview to honor the security cluster on invitation of the 3C Church. It is heartwarming and encouraging to know that interest and well-being of security forces in our country are important to faith-based organizations and the people of South Africa who we vowed to serve and protect. Ladies and gentlemen, in an effort to deal a serious blow to crime in an integrated and multidisciplinary approach, the SABS has established numerous partnerships with various entities and stakeholders over the years. The importance of these partnerships and close working relationship with the South African Police Service in the fight against crime cannot be overemphasized, and we appreciate their continued effort and commitment. It is important that we sustain these partnerships across all levels of society, and we also need their full support to implement all the sub's relevant strategies to effectively respond to crime. Distinguished guest, we are conducting this interview at a very befitting time as we are heading towards the fast approaching festive season. The Department of Police launched the National Safer Festive Season Operations Crime Fighting Campaign in Free State during October 2020 under the auspices of the theme Tight Grip and the Mission Wellbeing and safety of South African citizens. With the slogan, hashtag safer festive season, aimed at ensuring that specific interventions are put in place in order to create a safe and secure South Africa that is conducive for social and economic stability. Supporting a better life for all, as it is usually at this time that criminal activities start increasing. All provinces will employ an integrated multidisciplinary approach characterized by the public and private partnerships, as well as the intelligent driven operations with the community at core. Program director, ladies and gentlemen, the South African Police Service will be working around the clock to conduct operations countrywide during this period focusing on visible policing at shopping centers and conducting operations and patrols at all levels of South Africa borders 
border posts and tourist destinations over the festive season. Our ports of entry will also be busier than usual as more people enter and leave the country for various reasons. A zero tolerance approach will be followed against the abuse of alcohol, especially drinking in public, substance abuse and crimes related to it. Allow me to take this opportunity to thank our dedicated SUBS members for their selfless service and dedication to rid our society of criminal and criminal activities and urge them to be vigilant and safe at all times. Their efforts are commended and appreciated by the South African Police Service and the entire country. We urge all people of South Africa to support the South African Police Service to report crime and be extra vigilant during this time. Ladies and gentlemen, and our viewers across the country, we must remember that we are still fighting the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. Police officers still have to bring criminals to justice during these very trying times. The balancing act of protecting themselves from the virus and protecting citizens from both the virus and criminals is a daily challenge which needs the maximum support from all those who have a vision of safer, free South Africa. As the South African Police Service, we are all aware of the importance of working as a collective to prevent and combat any form of crime that may threaten the safety and security of our community. We have an obligation to our country and the communities we serve to continue enforcing the authority of the state and to fulfill our constitutional mandate. In its implementation of the National Development Plan Vision 2030, the South African Police Service has an obligation to build safer communities, as in Chapter 12 of the NDP emphasizes that all vulnerable groups, inclusive of women and children and rural communities, should enjoy equal protection and their fear of crime should be eradicated through effective coordinated responses of the police, business community and civil society, as well as churches. Although efforts have been made to eliminate gender-based violence and femicide in our country, it continues to be a profound and widespread problem. Deeply entrenched in institutions, cultures, and traditions in South Africa, impacting on almost every aspect of life, which is disproportionately affect women and children. Gender-based violence and femicide is a phenomenon deeply rooted in gender equality and continues to be one of the most notable human rights violations within all societies. As South Africans, an international community take a stand to observe the 16 days of activism of no violence against women and children, which started on the 25th up until the 10th of December. The South African Police Service joined hands with the rest of government to proceed with its uninterrupted 365 days awareness campaigns and crime fighting activities. The SAPS acknowledges and appreciates the involvement of the majority of community members in fighting crime efforts with police and reiterates the call to all community members, especially males, to rally behind the police in the fight against the scourge of gender-based violence and femicide. Ending gender-based violence is declared a national priority by the president it is important to immediately report any incident of gender-based violence and femicide, not only during the 16 days of activism of no violence against women and children, but wherever it may occur. If cases of this nature is not reported, it can lead to cycles of repeat offending and repeat victimization that may maintain serious crime of rape and sexual offenses and can also escalate into serious crimes such as murder, attempted murder, 
assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. And it is where we need you as the public to assist us to successfully implement all our strategies and initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, the Integrated Safer City Project was recently launched on the 20th of November in Guazulu Natal. The concept follows a dedicated, integrated, multi-stakeholder approach aimed at achieving safety through technology and other relevant platforms in order to achieve a smart city. Let us then aim to work together and rally behind the South African Police Service to ensure that our communities are and feel safe across the country. Continue to be the eyes and the ears of the police and report crime to your nearest police station. The SAPS Crime Stop number is 086-00-10111 or inserting a short code star 134 star 10 hash and report crime tip-offs anonymously on my SAPS app. Thank you very much to the pastors for inviting us to this wonderful church. I thank you. Wow, that was really, really awesome. Thank you, General. Uh, we've been blessed by that. And I think there's some key words that you mentioned there that's working together. Working together. And the community rallying behind the police. Um, there is a responsibility uh, for the community to work with the police. I mean, obviously, you can't do that without the community. Definitely, definitely. We need the community because majority of the crime, especially the gender-based violence, mm. they happen behind closed doors. Yes. They happen in the places of entertainment. Yes. And the police cannot be there yes. to patrol those areas. But with the information and the community coming forward and giving us the information, we will be able to eradicate mm. the sketch. Yes. Definitely. Yes. yes. Mm. And that's important. And we want to leave that with you. And I'm going to be getting into the message now. I'm going to be speaking about that. That we've got to understand. We can't, we're not absolved from responsibility. It's every single one of us that make this community, that makes the nation safe. We've got to do our part as well. And uh, General, we're so thankful. And that's why, you know, we, we every year we celebrate the security cluster. And usually this place is packed with, with police officers and police cadets. Um, but unfortunately, with COVID this year, you know, we can't do that. But we're so excited to, to, to have you with us. I know the police national commissioner really wanted to be here. And, um, but you know what? We're so glad to have you with us here, you know, and, uh, and to, to, to rep represent, um, you know, the South African Police Services. Now, I just want to call on um, your colleagues, uh, General um, uh, Marsha, if you can please come forward, and Colonel uh, Mati, if you can come stand here with us. And we're going we're gonna to pray together as well. And uh, we just want to celebrate uh, you. And... Um, and you can just stand on that side there. And uh, we're so excited to have you with us. Um, and uh, we, we want to appreciate you. And uh, we're thankful for how God is using, using you. Um, with General Marshall, you've, we've been more active with you on the groundwork. You've helped us a lot with a few distributions. So you've been actively helping us there. We really appreciate it. And all our endeavors that we've been doing, as I said earlier, you know, uh, we would not be able to do what we do without, without the police, really, really. So we really love and appreciate you. And, you know, um, you know, with the perception, you know, we look at the corruption that we have, but you know, in every facet of every society, there is, there is corruption. And sometimes it's not even corruption, it's just laziness. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even when it comes to church, you get, uh, you get uh, corrupt pastors, you get lazy pastors, and you get good pastors. Journalists, you get uh, corrupt journalists, and then you just get lazy journalists, mm -hmm. and then you get diligent journalists, you know, uh, politicians, the same thing, uh, you know, and I'm sure you have it within the sector and never must we take the negative part and build because that's not the foundation. And, you know, having you here and knowing you guys personally, um, you know, our hearts are warmed because we know we've got 
born again children of God that love Jesus and where, um, you know, Jesus is the foundation of your lives and you're passionate in love with this nation, putting your lives on the line. And uh, therefore we do this because, you know, people can talk, people say things, they're always looking for a sensational story, but we know behind the scenes what the work, um, as a church, we are involved in 33 police stations. 33 police stations. I was just chatting to General Marsha just before the service that we, you know, we want to be more accurate in our help. We want to, we need to sit and have a meeting, but we're active in 33 places, police stations where we play an active role, a spiritual role, you know, to help because, um, you know, with the, 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 you know, when I hear the stories and I hear, I see what happens, you know, some pastors, they come back and they, they're weeping because they go and then the boards are there, you know, how, in a weekend, how many rapes have taken place and stuff. And that's real issues. It's real stuff. And as a police officer, you're the first on the scene. You're the first responder. You're dealing with people that are crushed, people that are broken. And that's why we're very active because, you know, to, to be able to handle that day in, day out, day in, day out without getting a hardened heart. Because the last thing we want is a police officer with a hardened heart. You've got to still, even though you're in a harsh reality of what you're doing, you want, you want a police officer still to be merciful, you know, and to be uh, loving, you know. Yes, you're there to enforce the law, you're enforcers, but you can't have a hard heart because then you're going to crush. So having that balance and having that wisdom, you, oh, let me tell you, it's, it's not an easy thing. You really need Jesus, right? Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, General Marsha, if you can just say a prayer, we'd really appreciate it. You can also say one or two words if you want to, and if you want to pray with us. Mm. Pastor, Pastor, thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. It's not all the time that you get it. When you get it, you are very excited. Yes. We're going to run with it. We're going to fulfill the vision of the Lord. Um, God is the one that always wants us to live in peace. That's why he sent Jesus, he sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us that we might have peace. So thank you so much. Um, we love the community to support us all the time and we are here to serve them. They must carry us. There's a scripture, um, a pastor that touched my heart, it's Luke 22. It says, Satan entered uh, Judas and Judas went and betrayed Jesus. Then it also says, still Luke 22, it says, um, uh, Jesus said to Peter, I have prayed for you because Satan sought for you. Yes. And I thought to myself, if Peter, an apostle, needed prayer yeah. that he must not fall, if Jesus himself, had to, when he was about to be crucified, went and prayed three times, he prayed because temptation was on him to say, Jesus, I'm God, this cross thing is not working for me, it's too hard, I want to turn back. But he had to pray to stay on the cross. How much more are policemen? Because not all of them know the Lord. So somebody must be there in the gap. And Pastor, that's why we appreciate you. To stand in the gap for us, that when temptation comes. Remember our Lord says, pray that temptation must not overcome you. And temptation can be in the form of corruption, or form of being lazy, or a form of not, or not caring. But if you step in, the devil will not enter us as he entered Judas. So I want to say thank you so much as we pray. Thank you so much, Pastor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that peace is your idea. That's why you sent your son, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to come and die for us. Mighty God, this day as you are here, lead us the police, as peace officers, your word says we are the sons of God. Father, I pray that you'll anoint us, you'll pray, you'll fill us with your spirit, all of us as, as, as policemen and women, that we may love our community, O oh God. And I pray that our communities also will love us, O oh God. And together we can do so much more. Together we can win South Africa and make sure that South Africa is a better place to live in. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. Someone Seven verse 1 says, unless the Lord build the city, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watch over the city, the watchman wakes up but in vain. My father, we don't want to wake up in vain. We want to be effective for God, both in the visible support and detective. I pray today, O oh God, for Holy Spirit, special touch, O oh God, that we may be effective and that we may make South Africa a better place to live in, that our communities can indeed be safe and feel safe. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. That is really powerful. And therefore, I want to encourage you. Um, you know, we love you. 
all those involved in the security, the South African police forces, the, 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 the Metro police of all our uh, different municipalities, um, uh, those in the security, uh, uh, even private security, everybody that's involved in keeping us safe, keeping us sound. We want to say we really love you. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you for putting your life on the line. We really, we understand that. We know that. We understand that it's dangerous. And then also, as General said, thank you for taking a stand. Thank you for allowing God to keep you and make sure that you stand for justice and you stand for truth and righteousness and that it's not your own justice according to how you think. You see, there's a difference between earthly justice and godly justice, but not justice according to what we think, a mob-style justice, but rather it's a godly-style justice that, is, that, is, that has truth and mercy intertwined, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ as well as truth uh, and righteousness and those working together. And for that, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. And we, once again, we want to say thank you, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. From our, the Minister of Police uh, to our National Police Commissioner and then all the colleagues, uh, General Vuma, uh, General Marsha that's with us, uh, uh, Colonel Mati, thank you for being with us. And then everybody connected, we love you and appreciate you. And from our side, you must know, we pray for you every single day. It's a commitment this ministry has made. So you must know there's thousands of people that are praying for you on a daily basis. You are on our prayer list. Listen to what I'm saying. So you are covered in prayer. Therefore, go forth in confidence and realize you can always have in the back of your mind that someone is standing with you, someone is standing for you, and someone is uh, praying for you. So know that we love you and we appreciate you. And just there where you are, I want to say a prayer. From the 3C family, I want to pray a prayer over you. And Heavenly Father, I speak a blessing over each and every person that is involved in keeping us safe. Lord, this is not easy. It is not easy. But Lord, I pray that you'll give them godly wisdom in the decisions they need to make on a daily basis. Because every day is a new day. Every day has got new challenges. Every day needs a special wisdom so that they can do things right within highly volatile situations and sensitive issues. Lord, I pray, give them godly wisdom in the decisions they need to make. And Lord, that I pray as well that you'll keep them, that you'll protect them, that you'll cover them, that you'll lead them and guide them. And then, of course, we pray for their families. Lord, the pressure on the families. And, and Lord, I just pray that you'll You'll cover the families. I speak a blessing over every marriage. I speak a blessing over the children and the grandchildren. Draw a hedge of protection around them. And I speak a blessing over their lives. And Lord, as we go into this festive season, that you'll keep them. As we go into the new year, Lord, that we're gonna see uh, great things happening through our security cluster. And Lord, we declare our love for them. We pray for them. And Lord, I thank you that you lead and guide them. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, amen. There you go. Thank you very much. So good having you with us. You so there you go, Pastor. Colonel. Great having you guys with us. And I'm going to preach the word now. And I've got some few things I need to share with the church and with the nation. Thank you so very much. And um, we'll be chatting later again. There you go. Right. Uh, now, church, we're going to get into the Word of God. We're going to get into the Word of God. And isn't it encouraging? We are so thankful that um, uh, the South African police services would take um, time out of their busy schedule to come. And we, you know we do this every year, but usually we have a crowd, you know, of people that are here, uh, of uh, police officers. This place is usually packed with uh, the security cluster. But... Um, today, you know, we're doing it through, um, you know, we're doing it through YouTube and on our, 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 our streaming platforms and through television. So we're really excited. And um, right, well, we're going to get into the Word of God. The text is Romans chapter 13. And you get out your notebooks and your pens and stuff and to get ready, take some notes. And uh, we're going to hear what the Word of God has to say concerning this subject. Romans 13 and verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. In other words, we need to submit to the government. He says, For there is no authority except from God. So the authority comes from God. The authority of government comes from God, the Bible says. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. That's in the Bible. No matter who you voted for, the Bible says the authority is appointed by God. Titus 3 verse 1, Paul mentions this so many times. He says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to 
obey. Say with me, obey. obey. Come on, one more time. Say with me, obey. obey. Right? He says, be, uh, he says, obey to be ready for every good work. So see how many times God has told us in the word that we need to submit to the rulers, we need to submit to the authorities. So we notice within this passage that uh, there are two reasons for government. We see firstly that it is to, uh, to do good. That's what verse four says. Verse four says, for he is God's minister. Every civil servant is called to serve. You are called to be the lesser. If you're a minister, you're called to be even lesser. And as the president, you should be the most humble person. You're supposed to be understanding that everything you are is to serve the people. Secondly, the government is there to bring law and order. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're celebrating the security cluster. We're celebrating the, 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 our, the SAPS, our South African police services that go out. And this is what they do. They put their lives on the line for us every single day. They're putting their lives on the line for us, serving us, helping us, and, and, and protecting us so that we can go about our normal days and that, that we can live, you know, this life. Now, I do want to just add to this that you do understand um, that the government has the right to punish us when it comes to the disobedience of our law. And please make sure that you don't bribe. Please don't bribe the police officers. Please, please don't. Please don't be the one that tempts. Because the Bible says, if you tempt one of these little ones, he says, it's better for you to put a millstone around your neck and go jump into the sea. Don't be the cause for somebody to sin. I was so amazed the other day. I mean, I had a man that came to me and I think he was caught doing some horrendous speed. And he said, well, you know what? I gave my, I gave my ID book and I, I put in 200 rand. And he said it to me with pride. And I'm thinking, and I'm a pastor. And I'm thinking, what arrogance is that? First of all, to, to do it. it. It blew me away. I was so mad. You know, first of all, that you would do something like that. And then secondly, that you would actually tell me and think that I will not get upset and think that's okay and think that's something that you can brag about. That's not, that's, that's not funny. It's not, it's not, it's not the, the, you know, uh, you know the, it takes two to tango. You know, when you're talking about, you know, somebody that's corrupt and that takes a bribe, it's also the person that gives the bribe. So it takes, it takes two to tango. And whether you're the one party or the other party, still both are corrupt. So I just want to encourage you. And I, I don't know why I'm saying this. I'm just saying this and I'm throwing this in. Obey the laws of the land. Do not be corrupt. Right. So we've got to understand government officials are servants of God. they ministers of the Lord. And therefore, you've got to understand that they carry the authority of God and they carry the anointing to be able to do their job, whether they're Christians or non-Christians. And therefore, we want to encourage each and every government uh, uh, a worker and every uh, civil leader. We love you. We appreciate you. We're standing behind you. And know that there's an anointing upon your life and that when you're working, you're working not for government, but you're working for God. You've got to understand that. The work that you do, yes, it's for the people, but the people belong to the Lord. And therefore, when you stand account one day, you're not going to stand account just to parliament. You're not going to just stand account to uh, uh, the, the leader in your department. You're not just going to stand account and uh, give account to the president. You will give account to God because God has given you the authority. God has given you the right and therefore, you carry the anointing of God. You carry the authority of God. And when you're working for the people, you carry the authority of God upon your life. Whether you're a Christian or not Christian, why? Because it's an appointment from God. That is what the Bible says. And therefore, if you're willing to give your life and lay down your life, God will lead you and guide you and give you the grace and give you the wisdom to be able to do what you do and to, able, to be able to do it diligently. Therefore, whatever your job might be, Serve God. Serve God in your job. Serve God. No, but serving the people, you are serving God. And you know what? God will never, never be indebted to you. You will be blessed within your life, beyond your salary, beyond that which you can think, beyond which that you can even fathom. You'll see a grace upon your life, upon your family, and upon your children. So I want to encourage you and all our government officials, we love you, we appreciate you. Once again, once again, we really, really appreciate you. But now, I want to start closing with this. There is a responsibility that we have as Christians to be godly citizens. Godly citizens. God has called us to be godly citizens. 
And first of all, that means being obedient. Being obedient. We need to be obedient. Say with me, obedient people. people. There you go. So verse 1 says, let every person be subject. We've got to be subject. And in verse 2, we've got to understand that when you break the law, you're coming against God's authority, not against the country's authority. And you will get caught. You will get caught. Some other way, it's going to catch up with you. Whether it's the country or whether it's in your personal life, you won't get away. You won't get away with it. Listen to what I'm saying. You won't get away with it. So maybe the government will catch you up, but within your life, it will catch up to you. Somewhere, it's going to catch up to you. And therefore, when you break the law, you're going against God Himself. And therefore, I want to encourage you, godly citizens, we need to be obedient people. Godly citizens are obedient people. Secondly, godly citizens need to be teaching people. We need to teach people about authority. We need to encourage people to obey. So not only are we obedient, but we teach other people to obey. Start with your kids at a young age. Start with them. Teach them to show respect. Teach them to show honor. You know, something that really, really bugs me is the disrespect and the dishonor that we see in parliament, the dishonor that we see in local government, how politicians speak to one another, how they treat one another, the words that they use, the accusations that are taking place. And this is, uh, this is all over the place. And you see, that is not God. That is not godly. That is not what God has called you to do. So therefore, from a young age, let's teach our children respect. If our politicians are not going to show what respect looks like, we're going to make sure that we teach our children and show what respect looks like. Therefore, show respect. Teach one another, teach people to show respect. Teach them to obey the law. Thirdly, godly citizens are people that get involved. They involve people. So, obedient people, teaching people, they involve people. Leviticus 5 verse 1 says, If anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. Listen to what I'm saying. You need to get involved. You cannot just walk away or walk to the other side of the road. That's not, a, that's not the godly way. You need to be involved. You can't be all spiritual and have a little cell together and we all come together in a service and we all singing and down the road, our young girls are being raped. Down the road, our young mothers are, are, are being beaten and, and, and our, the wives are being beaten. We, we, we can't just stand around and do anything while we see racist chants going on. We can't stand around and see law and disorder. We can't stand around and do nothing. We need to get involved. And it starts off in your neighborhood, wherever you are. Make sure that you are involved. If there's something that you know, go to the police stations. As we have heard, as we have heard today, the, the, as the commissioner has said to us, we need to be involved, every person, to be able to bring law and order. We can't expect a few men and women to bring about law and order. Every single one of us, each and every one of us, are responsible to make sure there's law and order within our nation. It's not our police force, it's everybody's responsibility, which means you've got to be involved. The things that are, that, are, that, that are not right, you need to go report. If there's bribe, bribes taking place, you need to go report. If, you see, we've got to have a culture of making sure that we bring about law and order. Number four, a godly people is a praying people. We need to pray. Pray for our president. Pray for our parliament. Pray for our local government. Pray for our local councillors. Uh, pray for the civil servants. Pray, pray for our, our police force. Uh, pray for our metro police force. But wherever you are, make sure that we pray for government. We need to pray. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Do you believe God answers prayer? Yes, He answers prayer. So let's get God involved. Bring God into every situation rather than just you know, becoming part of the mob. Please, please, please stay away from being part of this mob, especially this Twitter mob. My goodness gracious. You know, when people on, on, on you know, the Bible says, we, 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 we read that last week. The Bible says that, you know, a man, you know, the Bible says, if you murder, you know, you will be judged. But he says, not if you murder, he says, if you hate your brother, because it's the same spirit. 
And I, and I look at this mob, you know, it's not that you physically have to take somebody and kill them as a mob, but I look at, for example, what takes place on Twitter and we've got this mob mentality that is taking place. That is not justice. See, that's an earthly justice where we shame people. That's not God, that's not godly. That's not, please never become part of a mob where you don't even know what's going on. You don't know the context of the situation. You don't have all the information. You don't know what's going on. You're not there but you judge and you become part of the mob. And then mostly we realize when mob justice takes place, we always realize 90% of the time what we thought it was, was not what it really was. And it comes out a day later, two days later, three days later, and innocent people have been hurt. Never become part of the mob, but be a praying people. Number five, be a thankful people. In all things, give God thanks. And we've gone through a tough time. This COVID, you know, uh, uh, pandemic has really affected us. It's really touched us. No, we, we've, we've gone through, look, God has kept us till now. It's a year now, right? It's a year and see, God has kept us. And it hasn't been easy, but you know what? It's been right. We've been walking with God. We've been dependent on God. God has brought us to where we are. Now be thankful. Thank God for where you are. Thank God that He has brought us through. Thank God in the midst of everything. Thank God for your president. Thank God for our, for our government. Thank God for our nation. Thank God for the opportunities that we have. Thank God for the freedoms we can enjoy where we can preach the gospel without being uh, imprisoned. Let's thank God. Let's thank God for what we have every single day. And thank God, I close off for the leaders and the public servants that we are. And that's why he says, render therefore all that is due. Verse seven of Romans 13. Taxes to whom taxes are due, pay your taxes, pay your taxes. Customs who wear customs are due, pay customs. Fear to whom fear, and then honor to whom honor. And therefore to our national commissioner, we, we show honor, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the work that you've done. And we, every, every one of the, the security cluster that's, that's connected to us right now, we wanna say from the 3C family and then everybody that's connected, multitudes of churches that are connected to us, we're saying here from the religious community, we are saying thank you, thank you, thank you for putting your lives on the line. Thank you for fighting for justice. Thank you for the sleepless nights so that we can sleep in peace that we can sleep through the night because you out in the night, you're patrolling our roads, you're patrol patrolling our borders, um, you're putting your, 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 your life in harm's way where you, you are working with people that want to, want to murder and kill and to destroy, yet you're going on to help us. And we wanna say that we really appreciate you. We really, really appreciate for what you have done. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.